Welcome back to Microeconomics. This is a little tutorial about externalities, specifically some worked problems. Take a moment to read this. University researchers created a positive externality because what they discover in their research labs can easily be learned by others who haven't contributed to the research costs. If there are no subsidies, what is the relationship between the private equilibrium quantity of university research and the socially efficient quantity of university research produced? So to understand how to answer this question, we probably should graph it. So if we have a price and quantity for university research, considering that it has an upward sloping supply and a downward sloping demand, we can start to think about the supply curve as the embodiment of costs, right? So just like we did in regular supply and demand, costs are uh, reflected in, in the supply curve. So when costs rise, supply curve should shift left. When costs drop, supply should shift to the right. That can help you with your production externalities questions. Here we have a consumption externalities problem. We have the benefits are mistakenly understated. So we're going to be looking at the demand curve which reflects the benefits of the good. So in the absence of any government action, the free market will come to its market equilibrium at the intersection of supply and demand. So the market equilibrium price and market equilibrium quantity are going to be obviously at the um, intersection of the X where supply crosses demand. But this might not be right. This might be an example of a market failure where the free market comes to the wrong price and quantity. And here we can see clearly that there's some benefits that are, that are escaping the attention of the market. There's some benefits that simply can't be collected. People are accruing benefits, receiving benefits, without paying for them. And actually this is true for much of university research when it comes to pharmaceuticals, when it comes to other technologies. Uh, research generates a lot of positive externalities. So the benefits of this research are understated. And so that's going to mess up our outcome. That's going to make our market equilibrium not quite right. Because uh, the market equilibrium will not reflect some of these benefits. So how would we actually go about graphing that? Well, you got to look at your demand curve, which embodies your benefits, and you got to think about, all right, how do we picture the benefits that are not in being reflected? And what you can do is take any quantity, we'll take the equilibrium one, and think about the value um, that the payers are receiving, but what about the value that others are receiving, people that are not um, directly involved with the consumption or production of research? So if we add up the extra, the external benefit, let's say it's a dollar extra, we could actually just plop that right on top of the demand curve. And we can do that actually at every quantity. We'll assume that there's a dollar worth of social or external benefit created at every quantity. And so the actual uh, demand curve that includes all of the benefits to society, the ones that are visible and the ones that are sort of uncollected or invisible, is going to be the connection of all those points. So the demand curve in the market is actually too low. We consider the full society's demand curve for this research to be higher. That new red curve is that demand curve. So now that we know this, it's going to be easier to answer the question. We can see that socially optimal outcome, the correct or efficient outcome, is where the red demand curve hits the supply curve, which is at a higher quantity, right, than the, um, the private free market's uh, equilibrium outcome. So we call that um, the socially optimal quantity of production, socially optimal price in quantity. And that will be the price and quantity that reflect all the benefits and costs. In this case, it's 
benefits that are a problem. So then we can realize that A is incorrect. We can realize that B is also incorrect. C looks like the correct answer, and D is incorrect because we actually do have enough information to answer the question. And here's our second problem. So Mike and Barb are both in a hotel room. Mike wants to smoke. Barb would prefer clean air. Smoking is valued to, to Mike at $20, and clean air is valued to Barb at $10. Can they get through this problem? This relates to the solution to externalities known as the Coase theorem, that is, under certain conditions, markets can solve their own externality problems, provided that transaction costs are sufficiently low, it's easy for the parties to talk to each other, and that property rights are well-defined, and doesn't really matter who owns the property rights. That's the, one of the big breakthroughs of the Coase theorem. So in this case, it's Bob and, uh, pardon me, Mike and Barb know their, the value of clean air and smoking, and we can use that to solve the problem. So one way to solve the problem would be th to think about which of the following answers will appeal to both sides. So A, Barb offers Mike $15 not to smoke, Mike accepts, does not smoke, B, Mike pays Barb $11 so that Mike can smoke. C, Mike pays Barb $9 so that Mike can smoke. And D, Barb offers Mike $10 not to smoke. And it's worth noting that Mike values smoking at $20 and Barb values smoking at $10, or values cleaner at $10. Rationally self-interested people will do things when marginal benefit is greater than marginal cost. Let's use that to solve our problem. So which solution benefits both sides? Which solution includes benefits greater than costs for both sides? There is one. So as long as their costs are different, we should find a middle ground that benefits both sides. Let's go through them each one by one. In A, Barb's cost is the $15 that she pays Mike. But remember, she values clean air at $10. So that's not really worth it to Barb. What about Mike? Mike values smoking at $20. And if he has to give that up, that's a $20 cost to him. But he only gets $15 in return. So it's not worth it to him either. We can scratch A off the list. What about B? Well, for B, the cost to Barb is the $10 in value of clean air that she gives up. But Mike is going to compensate her $11. So the value or the benefit is greater than the cost. It's worth it to Barb. And Mike and B, Mike, the cost is $11, but he gets to smoke, which is worth $20. So that's worth it. And C, Mike offers to pay Barb $9. The cost to Barb is the $10 of clean air she's giving up, and she's compensated only $9, so the cost is higher than the value to her. Not worth it. For Mike, the cost is $9.00 and the benefit is the $20 he's gonna get from smoking, so for him it is worth it. But C is not gonna work for both sides, so it's not gonna be a solution. And then D, Barb's cost is the $10 that she gives up in clean air, and she's compensated $10. She's pretty ambivalent. And Mike, Mike gives up $20 in value for smoking for $10. Not worth it for Mike. So B is the only solution that works for both sides. 